Hey, Arnold. Decided to hang out in the park, did ya? Looks like this burrito was out of your league. Quick, find something to drink. Arnold, wait. God knows what might be in this magic shop. Well, since you successfully solved your Mexican food problem, let's go have some fun. What a huge line. It looks like you'll have to wait for a bit. Or... Arnold, this is not a good thing to do. Looks like this cute little granny needs your help. Arnold, watch out! You know, Arnold, I decided to go to the morgue and say my final goodbyes to you. Oh my god, are you alive? No, you've been resurrected! It seems that the elixir you drank worked. You are now immortal. Congratulations, Arnold. You will now be the longest living organism on Earth. Your body is now regenerating, and the term cellular senescence is now just a joke for you. Well, how are you gonna use your immortality? Got it, you'll cross the road on red. Grope random girls. You'll also win the Kenny McCormick Lookalike Contest. That's ridiculous. You have an infinite number of years ahead of you, and you waste them on this? Arnold, you could study everything in the world, learn any martial art, and even go explore and colonize new galaxies. Arnold, how about maybe stop wasting your time? The world around you is changing rapidly, but you will lag behind in progress, and you will feel superfluous in society. Everything that was once important to you will gradually disappear. Over time, everything will cease to please and surprise you at all, because you've already seen everything. Looks like they're up to something again. Hey, are you guys gonna try and make someone immortal? Whoa, who is this? I'm guessing this guy has no idea what loneliness is. I think we found just the guy you're looking for. I can't wait to find out how you're gonna make him immortal. Transplanting Voorhees DNA into the handsome dude is a great idea. From a biological standpoint, you can make a person immortal. To achieve this, you simply need to remove from the DNA the propensity to age and suffer from disease. But today, Snot and Gob are trying to figure out how can you kill something that's immortal. The first test is teleportation. To move an object from point A to point B, you need to move all the atoms and neural connections exactly as they were in the original. After that, the original has to be destroyed, with only the perfect copy remaining. Therefore, theoretically, teleportation kills both a mortal and an immortal. Hmm, I was expecting a slightly different result, but it's much too early to give up. Here we have an alkaline bath that can dissolve any living creature. It's a shame these aliens didn't watch Breaking Bad, because after all, then they know that alkali will dissolve a bathtub faster than a human body. I think the next test is gonna kill you for sure, handsome dude. It's gonna start by destroying your brain. No one on this planet can endure something like this for more than a day. You're still alive! Okay. <laughs> Lucky for us, Snot and Gob just so happened to steal this huge meat grinder yesterday. <coughs> what are we waiting for? The meat grinder ain't gonna turn itself on. Congratulations, Arnold. You just volunteered for the bulletproof skin test. Wow, you still alive, Superman? So, a successful test. 
Hey, Arnie, mm -hmm. these guys seem pretty happy with the outcome, but they want to up the ante. A grenade launcher fires a grenade from its barrel at a speed of 120 meters per second, and it can pierce 50 centimeters of steel armor. Now we need something more serious. For example, skin made from fullerene. This is the strongest material known to science, an allotrope of carbon, and it's 200 Ooh. times stronger than the strongest steel. Congratulations, Arnie! Your fullerene skin can withstand a rocket-propelled grenade, which, of course, cannot be said about your brain. The shockwave has turned it into jiggly jelly. But luckily, you're in a super-secret lab. That's right, Arnold! Perfect time to get away! After all, now automatic weapons can't hurt you. In fact, you can't be strangled, and even getting hit by a car won't hurt you. But your strength, Arnie, you little wimp, that hasn't changed a bit. But instead, as I can see, now you've got nerves of steel. But the problem is, Arnold, now you have to hide for the rest of your life so that no one knows that you've got super skin. Wait, what? I see, Arnie. You'll do anything for likes. Well, each his own. Arnold, look! It's you, but from the future. Wait, Arnold, he doesn't need your clothes. He needs your help. That's why you're going to the year 2050. Oh, dear. That's not the bright future people are thinking about. Indeed, by 2050, the Earth is suffering from global warming. The planet's population has grown to over 10 billion people. This overpopulation has caused a shortage of fresh water. Can you imagine? The planet is on the brink of destruction, and they're fighting over Pepsi. All right, back to our mission. In 2050, everyone has cybernetic implants. And since enemy drones can detect implants at a distance of 10 kilometers, you, Arnold, are the most undetectable and invulnerable person in 2050. You are the one who will help change the course of the war. Soldiers assemble. And so, Arnold, the enemy has been spotted in the north, but the way is blocked by electromagnetic guns. Instead of projectiles, they fire electrical impulses, and the impulse speed exceeds 7,000 kilometers an hour. We have to find shelter. Quick, go down into the subway. You escape the guns, Arnold, but there are other problems now. Drones detected by scanners. And don't worry, Arnold, remember, these drones won't even notice you. You just need to rush past them and turn off the power. Well done, Arnold. The future sure wasn't ready for the likes of you. Keep going, buddy. You're almost there. It's time to get to the surface. Arnold, there are a lot of enemies around. Get into the exosuit. With it, you can become a super soldier and travel long distances without getting tired. And all physical activity becomes 20 times easier than it was before. You're unstoppable now, Arnold. Now you just need to figure out the controls. Huh? Arnold, no! You just killed yourself from the future. Okay, well, no time to grieve. Your enemies are coming. You have a flamethrower. Use it. Oh, yeah. No one ever thought that one day this would happen in Hollywood. <laughs> Arnold, look out! A rocket! Arnold! Oh, no. Whoops. We have a small problem. Arnold, don't be scared, <gasps> but you are buried alive. Just like Rodrigo Cortez. <laughs> uh, stop yelling already. Screaming increases panic, heart, and accordingly the amount of air you use. And you have a maximum of two hours of breathing in your coffin until you run out of oxygen. Arnold, your phone. You're only two meters deep. Hooray. There's one line of connection. Call your loved ones. They'll save you. But this isn't certain because for them, you're dead. They'll probably think your call is someone's stupid hmm. prank. Try to connect to the internet. Your post will be seen for sure, but only after they like a cat in a funny suit, a new post by Ariana Grande, and a funny-shaped potato. 
I have it. Geotag posts get 79% more engagement, and a post that says oil was found will 100% attract the attention of Donald Trump. In critical situations, a person's animal instincts wake up. Well, I expected that it would wake up in you. Arnold, when lacking oxygen, people often see hallucinations. Maybe we can Google what to do. Don't hammer a nail in your life like it's a coffin lid. Get out of your comfort zone. There's no way. Oh, kill Bill too. Do it like Uma Thurman. You need to punch a hole in the lid. Be strong in spirit. Collect all your anger like Naruto. Ooh, did it hurt? You need to somehow break the lid. Look if you have anything in your pockets. Ew, Arnold, what is that? Oh, give me a break. You won't even need them outside the coffin. Ooh, this will do. Break through. Hit. It's like you're trying to escape from fascists or from the whining songs of Billie Eilish. You did it! Now you have to tamp all the dirt into the coffin to clear your way out. You have to lift your shirt so that it can be tied over your head. This is so that you don't suffocate from dirt falling on your head. Arnold! 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 Wake up! Hallucinations again. It's way easier for a person to get from out of a depth if it's equal or less than their height. I think you know what I'm getting at, Arnie. Today, we're going to bury you alive for the third time. And since people have seen you perform this trick a bunch of times already, you're going to do it in a special way this time. We're going to handcuff you. And the coffin's going to be made out of metal. Okay, Arnie, buddy. Ready? Get in. During past burials, you already learned the most important rule. You need to breathe calmly and deeply in order to conserve your oxygen. Okay, now quit being calm. We need to get the handcuffs off. It's really simple. All you need to do is break one finger on each hand so you can slip them through the cuffs. Oh, quit your belly aching, Arnie. You still got two more fingers left. Use your belt or watch to try to crack open the lid. A metal coffin has weak points all along the edges. Come on, Arnie, I was kidding. You can't break through the metal, doofus. There's two meters of earth above you, which is pressing down with a mass of almost two and a half tons. So this third burial will probably be your last. Arnie. Arnie. Arnie, where are you? Oh, you little bastard. Yes, you really are Arnie Houdini. In just the same way, Harry Houdini climbed through a secret compartment in the sidewall of the coffin and into a tunnel. And then through a hatch in the grave, he dropped down on the coffin from above and covered himself with a half meter layer of dirt. But where's the hatch, Arnie? Surprise! You didn't really think I'd let you out so easy, did you? Swim up, Arnold, before the concrete sets. Today is your last day. Ah! Just like for 684,000 people every year from falling from a great height. Or due to a medical error, it's the third leading cause of death in the U.S. after heart disease and cancer. What the bejeebus? You got hit by an electric scooter. How ridiculous. Your senses begin to fail. Vision, smell, taste, and finally hearing. You, buddy, are dead. After cardiac arrest, you have six minutes before complete brain death. This time frame increases with anabiosis or hypothermia. One girl survives after six hours hours of clinical death. She lay in ice with a body temperature of 64 degrees, and it saved her life. But nothing's gonna help you now, buddy. In a minute, you've lost 10% of your oxygen. Oh, and your wallet. Your heart has stopped pumping blood, and blood clots are starting to form. However, your brain is now working more actively than it ever has before. An 87-year-old man was undergoing an electroencephalogram when he suddenly had a heart attack. 15 seconds before death, the EEG detected special brain waves in his head. Such waves occur while dreaming or during meditation. Therefore, at the time of your death, you really might recall your entire life. Arnold, right now you have 12 times more dopamine than usual and 20 times more more serotonin. That's why you're experiencing a most vivid dream. During clinical death, only 15% of people experience something terrifying. The rest see the faces of family members, animals or plants, past events, or even the classic white light.
Wow, Arnold, congratulations. You died and went to heaven. Arnold, get in line and wait for St. Peter to let you in. Ooh, how cool is this? Hey, wow, look, is that John Lennon? No, wait, it's just Jesus. Here, there's even a wall of paintings of God made by great historical artists. Here, there's e in ancient times, people believed that God was oh. terrifying and bloodthirsty. For example, Aztecs constantly sacrificed people to their god Huitzilopochtli to make it rain. The ancient Greek gods personified human qualities or natural phenomena. Unfortunately, Arnie, in the Christian paradise, unlike the Muslim one, you don't get 72 virgins. But hey, look, right there, it's John Lennon. Or is that Jesus again? And here he is. He has many names. The Creator, Jehovah, Adonai, Yahweh, God. Oh, shh, he's sleeping. You probably shouldn't mess with his stuff, Arnie. Arnold, what are you thinking? You can't go in there. This is the control center for the whole world. Don't touch anything, Arnold. Oh, this is not good. Over the past few centuries, religious belief in the world has been dropping. And God is the most popular being in the world, has a lot of haters. You dare play God, Arnold. Man is simply too greedy for this role. There are lots of examples from history, and they all ended pretty badly. Arnold, stop! This ain't a joke, buddy. Great. Now everything's gone haywire. Fanatical faith has always led to wars. And now a nuclear crusade has begun. Arnold, stop before it's too late. Are you even listening to me? Phew, just in time. Hey, God, don't take this the wrong way, but thank God you're here. Arnold, looks like you're done. I have a surprise for you. Today, you'll take part in an experiment. Don't worry, it's being done by real professionals. Or not. Let's check how the Earthlings act under conditions of fear. Is this noise really scary? I peed in fear. By the way, don't drink the juice. He's done 10,000 hours indoors. He doesn't look scared. Oh. And let's turn on weightlessness. Like in outer space. So, Arnold, are you ready to play the game in space? Well, or just fly by. On Earth, gravity holds you down, so jumping and flying away doesn't work. But if you can gain enough speed, then you can overcome the gravity of the Earth. The force of gravity and the force of inertia balance each other out, and you could fly safely in zero gravity around the Earth. Moving around in weightlessness isn't easy. And certainly not with your lack of grace. Arnold, it seems you've discovered a new type of fuel, hydrogen sulfide. It can help you deal with the monsters. Luckily, you're not the only one who missed pre-flight training. Careful, Arnie. Looks like you broke the seal. Due to the open lock, the balance of gases is all out of whack. Get your suit on, Arnold. Hooray, you did it. But now there's another problem. How are you going to hear the monsters now? I think you'll just scare away all the monsters yourself. No, you're not deaf, Arnold. Sound simply can't travel in a vacuum. Sound travels in waves. A vibrating object transmits its vibration to neighboring molecules or particles. In space, air molecules are so far apart that they can't transmit vibrations. No air, no sound. So it's better you just sit in the closet. As long as they let you anyway. Houston, we have a problem. Is this the last door? I wonder what's behind it. Arnold, hold on, it's not over yet. 
He's in space. We're holding an Among Us style party. It's a popular game with over 500 million players and more than any other game in history. With 97% of players playing the free version on mobile devices, but most of the revenue is generated from the paid PC version. Of course, we're playing the free version. If it's free, I'll play as well. And I chose Brown for a reason, because he's kicked out less than 65% of the time. In more than 90% of votes, people choose to kick out black, and it's the exact color you have, Arnold. Let the games begin. The most important thing is to act quickly, because you can be killed at any time. And here's the first murder. Don't worry, we have a lot of detectives here. They'll immediately figure out that you're not the imposter. Oops. I'm pretty sure you were thrown under the bus here, Arnold. It's time to get the hell out of here before you're chucked out into space. You need to complete tasks in the game to make it clear to the rest of the players that you're not the imposter. Whoops. This room is already occupied. Let's not do this couple. There's a new task. You need to extinguish the fire in the electrical room. Looks like it worked. They believe you. Come on, help out this player. I think I saw a fire extinguisher. Arnold, someone is seriously trying to frame you. Moreover, according to statistics, the electrical and admin rooms are the most dangerous places. If you're actually an imposter, you need to blow up the engine and win the game. It's not working. That's cool, Arnold. So you aren't an imposter. Congratulations. Careful. Got you, my friend. Forgive me. We had fun. But now you and I have to part ways. Distinguishing virtual reality from reality is becoming more and more difficult every day. Ooh, deja vu. Calm down, you paranoid pinhead. Stray animals often break into houses to find food. Or maybe the world around you is a simulation. Relax, buddy, it's an optical illusion. If you change your viewing angle, everything falls into place. But after all, truth be told, everything you see really is just a figment of your brain's imagination. Light entering your retina is converted into an impulse that transmits information to the visual image processing system. From there, the signal goes to your brain and you see what you see. And when, woo, woo, what a beauty, hmm. Another glitch or a consequence of popular trends in mass markets. Such synchronicity can make you think you're losing your mind. Yes, Arnold, you're right. This definitely needs to be recorded. But take your phone out of your pocket slowly and carefully, buddy. Or the police might think that you're reaching for a weapon. This is how the illusion works. The reticular formation in your brainstem becomes excited. Hey, where are you going, you coward? Arnold, who's this? No, 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 don't even think about it. This is not the Matrix. That's a bad idea, Arnold. Almost as bad as making a sequel to the legendary trilogy. Meet Arnold is a hallucination, and the effects are now 300 times stronger. And Arnold's brain turns into goo. In fact, just like him, this requires serious medical intervention. What the heck? Am I, am I glitching now too? How can you tell what's real and what isn't? Another evening session of degradation watching TV. So what do we have here? Elon Musk has launched a new rocket into space. And space has launched a meteor back at Elon Musk. Arnold, relax. You don't even know what a meteor is. A meteor is a large celestial body of cosmic origin. Their mass ranges from a few grams to thousands of tons. And don't be scared. There's only one case of a meteor strike hitting a person in history in 1954. And even then, it just hit somebody in their leg. It seems like somebody's volunteering to save the planet. And he's just bursting with enthusiasm. It looks like this episode will be the shortest ever. And have a happy end. Ah, uh, no, never mind. Same old, same old. Seems like our planet is about to be destroyed. Or maybe there's another savior. Could it be Arnold? Excellent. We'll pick an outfit for you. 
So this one is a no. Definitely not this one. Yee! No, not that one. Now this one. This is what you need. Although we could just copy what Project Dart from SpaceX did. It's planned that in 2022, a spacecraft weighing 500 kilograms will ram into an asteroid named Didymos at a speed of 6 kilometers per second. The autopilot hasn't been installed yet, so you're going to have to fly manually and become a hero. Oh, wow, Arnold, you survived. Pretty much like all the other lowest forms of life, like microbes. But now there is a small issue with water. After a meteor 100 kilometers in diameter hit the Earth, the shockwave destroyed almost all life within a radius of 100,000 square kilometers. There was a huge release of sulfur, and dust and ash from all the destruction rose into the upper atmosphere and blocked access from the sun's mm. rays. You must be hungry. It's good that you kept your space food in the rocket. There wasn't any food. That's terrible, because there's no food left on Earth. It's good that you're in a spacesuit, since it's minus 50 degrees outside, and you don't want to walk here for very long. Watch out! I forgot to add that cockroaches have also survived, and they've mutated just a wee little bit. You better run to infinity and beyond! One fine day, which didn't portend disaster at all, Arnold got locked up in a hypermarket until the end of his days. You may ask why, and the answer is just because. I simply wanted to lock him up in a hypermarket. Here you can eat sweets and candy bars all day long, and you can drive around the store in a cart. At your disposal are goods for recreation, sports, clothes, and even medicines. On average, there are 120,000 different products in a hypermarket that will provide you with 50 years of a carefree life. But unfortunately, without electricity, a large part of these goods are going to spoil the very next day. At room temperature, the entire ton of milk that's in the store will be gone in just 18 hours. Fresh chicken, pork, and beef will all go bad within a day. Cakes and pastries will last a little longer, maybe 36 hours, if you're lucky. You could try to prepare. You could salt the fish and dry the bread. Then their shelf lives will be extended by years. But hey, seize the day, right Arnold? After a week, vegetables and fruits will also go bad, and you'll have to switch to cereals. But even just their preparation will deplete the limited supply of water you can drink by at least 10 years. You could try to extend that by filtering it through coal from the gardening department and then cleaning it with silver. Okay, so from now on, your usual meal is going to be canned food. Beef stew can last almost indefinitely if the packaging isn't damaged. And pickled cucumbers and tomatoes can be an additional source of water. So, the three tons of canned food that are in the store will last you for eight years. And then the last remaining source of food will be... Many things can be used for other purposes. For example, you can wipe your bum with just about any kind of paper. You just need to crumple it up thoroughly and, well, use it. Just like our great-great-grannies did. And when you run out of cash, you can always use the card. Hey, don't touch anything here. Somehow, your imbecility is heraldic, Arnold. You've managed to fulfill the dreams of oh so many. To be absolutely alone on a massive cruise ship. Woohoo! For just a simple seven day trip, they have more than 12,000 eggs, 380 kilograms of ice cream, and two tons of seafood and meat on board. This amount of food will be enough to last you around five years if you eat it all by your lonesome. After going on a cruise like this one, people on average gain up to 3 kilograms of excess weight. Cruise ships have a ton of entertainment, so much so in fact that for most passengers, 7 days isn't enough to do and see it all. Oops, looks like we're out of fuel. 
At full speed, the ship burns up to five tons of fuel per day. Now you'll drift in the ocean just like all the other cruise liners do, because it's cheaper than staying in port. Arnold, looks like your vacation's gonna be a wee bit longer than we expected. A whole month has passed. I wonder where this current will carry you. Congratulations, Arnold. Now the whole world hates you. Yay. Pack your bag, schmucko. Your vacation is over. We're now located in Portugal. The highest waves in the world are formed here. It's like a cheetah, but in the world of waves, because its speed has already reached 60 miles per hour. One Hawaiian surfer caught a 79-foot wave here. For this, he got into the Guinness Book of Records. Have you ever heard of a killer wave? These are single waves around 80 to 100 feet high, which can't be seen even from a ship. They can appear suddenly and imperceptibly. Therefore, there's very little time to save a ship's crew. Killer waves can sink a ship in just one hit. Even Conor McGregor would envy such a knockout. The largest wave on record was formed in 1958 in the Lituya Bay in Alaska. The wave reached 100 feet in height and covered the mountains approaching the bay. As a result, all vegetation up to an altitude of 1,700 feet above sea level was destroyed. And this is the height of five and a half Statues of Liberty. Don't shout underwater, otherwise you'll choke. Keep yourself conscious by any means. 